Boy, do we have a lot of things to talk about today, folks. But before we jump into all the AHS news, I want to thank my channel members for making these videos possible. And you too can become a member for as little as 99 cents a month and receive exclusive uploads every month and early access to videos. Thank you so much for the support. Now let's start off with the biggest news of the day. You saw it in the title, and if you have not heard already, the official subtitle for season 10 of American Horror Story is, drumroll, double feature. Ryan revealed the title Friday night via social media with a similar teaser video to last February's cast reveal. Luckily, Ryan didn't leave us hanging, and he let us know exactly what this title implies. American Horror Story Season 10 will consist of two separate stories in one season. In an Instagram comment, Ryan tried to explain this further by saying the following. It means two seasons for the fans airing in one calendar year, so double the viewing pleasure. One set by the sea, this cast has already been announced. A second by the sand, that cast announcement is coming. End quote. Wow, a lot to unpack there. This clarification may raise more questions than answers, so let's start with the biggest bombshell in that comment. The cast we know and have known for over a year is only the main ensemble for the first story. So will any of them carry over to the second half of the season, or will it consist of an entirely different main ensemble? We'll just have to wait and see when he announces the second cast. The fact that I'm saying that would be crazy to me like about a month ago. But back to the title, Double Feature, let's talk about it. This is definitely one of the most controversial title reveals I've witnessed since I've been in this fandom. Some people genuinely like it, and others strongly dislike it. I will say I haven't seen too many people that completely love it, but uh, where do I stand? I'm not gonna lie, when I was watching the title reveal video for the first time, I was not expecting that title at all. I didn't have a good guess on what this season's title would be, but I honestly had no clue what to expect. I will say, as it stands right now, with a few days to sit with it, I am a fan of this title, but I do understand why the general reaction is that it's a bit underwhelming. As you probably know, double features were a way that theaters would exhibit two low-budget B-movies for the price of one back in the day, and many early horror films tended to be exhibited in this way. So not only is this title and concept rooted in the history of the horror genre, it also allows for two completely separate concepts, where a more specific title that may be more in line with previous AHS titles could restrict the concept. So I am behind this title, and if you are one of the people who are completely furious about the title, I respectfully request that you take a deep breath, relax, and realize that this is a TV show that nobody has seen more than a quarter of a second of footage from. I think it's always a good idea to hold off on judgment until the full picture is realized, and even if this season was called the worst title in the world, like American Horror Story tree or something. It wouldn't matter if, you know, the story is really good, you know, so who cares what the title is? Like, let's just wait for the season. Speaking a little more on my initial reaction to the title, one of the reasons I was confused was because I knew I had heard that title thrown around before, AHS Double Feature. I knew I had seen it somewhere. It hit me after one minute deep in thought that the subtitle of Double Feature was used as a placeholder during the process of producing Season 8's promotional materials. Several concept posters that would later be used in Apocalypse's ad campaign had the subtitle of Double Feature. We've been able to see these posters for years thanks to the graphic designer's online portfolio, and these posters have been posted to AHS fan accounts like for a couple years now. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you had the same thought because these posters have been out there. So yes, Ryan Murphy has been thinking about this concept for quite some time, and this is purely speculation, but maybe the original plan was for season 8 to actually be the double feature season when they were developing the ad campaign. If you don't recall, when the idea of a crossover season was publicized, it was reported that the Murder House and Coven crossover would take place in Season 9. Obviously, it happened in Season 8, so it was moved up, so therefore the original plan for Season 8 must have been put on hold. 
This, combined with the fact that every script has been completed for season 10 before filming even began, raises my hopes that Double Feature will not suffer from the rushed endings that previous seasons have suffered. And if they're marketing this as two seasons in one, that means we'll get two season finales in one, so hopefully the odds are in their favor that they won't fuck up both of them. Another question that is still to be revealed is, how many episodes will this season have? Ryan Murphy did say double the viewing pleasure, but I do hesitate to think that this will have double the amount of episodes. That would be a little crazy. Um, I mean, I'd be down, but I definitely don't think we should get our hopes up for that. In recent years, the episode counts have gotten as small as 9 or 10 episodes, and I think they could tell two complete stories in 10 episodes look to literally any miniseries of the last decade. But I do hope the episode count is raised a little, maybe up to 12 episodes. The concept of splitting a season down the middle was touched upon in Roanoke, which featured a genre change in the midpoint from mock you series to found footage, although the characters and general arcs were consistent throughout. I am excited to see how Double Feature will tell these two separate stories, and I wonder if they will connect in any way. Moving on though, one thing this title does very well is concealing what exactly will be happening in the season. You know, Asylum's about an asylum, cults about a cult, 1984 somewhat takes place in 1984, etc. Double feature, on the surface level, does not clue us in on what the themes will be. We could obviously look to some of those B-horror movies of yesteryear for some clues, but I think we should look no further than the title reveal video. One by the sea and one by the sand. Clearly, the one by the sea is the one that we know the most about, and is most likely the one they were filming in Provincetown. Let's call the one by the sea part one, and the one by the sand part two, for clarity's sake. Who knows which one will actually come first though, but in terms of what we know, we know a decent amount of information about part one. We have the full cast, we have some set photos, and at least one still from it. Then there's part two, which comparatively we know nothing about. Part two takes place by the sand, and my initial thought coming off of my last theory video was the Lady of the Dunes, but upon further thought, I doubt that would be explored in part two. If it is going to be explored, it will probably be explored in part one, unless both parts of the season do take place in Provincetown. Who knows? Ryan revealed that part two will be tackling a concept that fans have been asking for. The general consensus on the internet right now is aliens. I've covered Apocalypse 1984 and now Double Feature on this channel, and let me tell you, aliens have been brought up as a theory every single time. So I feel crazy, but I actually think this year might be the year it happens. If they do, I'd be happy simply because we can stop theorizing about these damn aliens that were introduced way back in Asylum. The sand hints at maybe a desert theme, so we got Roswell, New Mexico, and also Area 51 in Nevada. The desert is a classic setting for a UFO or maybe an abduction story, so I think people may be onto something. You'll notice in the teaser that the words won by the sand float upward and fade away, almost as if they're being abducted. Twitter user Gold Crucifix noted that the black color of the sand resembles stars in the night sky as well, and once you see it, it is hard to unsee. Let me know what you think part 2 will focus on in the comments below. Anyway, since my last video, aside from the title reveal, we have also been given a ton of other updates, so let's cover all of the new information. Firstly, we got some casting revelations. Dennis O'Hare, known for his roles in Murder House, Coven, Freak Show, Hotel, and Roanoke, is making his return to the AHS universe for double feature. Ryan Murphy confirmed this news on Instagram, and Dennis shared his excitement on social media as well. I am so happy to hear this. If you recall my video about Francis Conroy joining the cast, I specifically wanted this to happen. So I'm even more excited for this season, and especially its cast. Another revelation that I reported to you guys as a rumor earlier this year, which is slightly less exciting, appears to be holding a significant amount of truth. So season 10 cast member Ryan Kira Armstrong shared a video from the set of Double Feature, 
which showed headshots for the entire main cast of Part 1 that we've known, with one notable change. Frances Conroy is included, and Kathy Bates is not. So a Twitter rumor circulated earlier in the year that Kathy had to drop out of the season due to her being at high risk for contracting COVID-19. Now this is still not confirmed by any official sources, and for all we know, the headshots could have been the cast members that were present for the Provincetown shoot, maybe Kathy was able to film all her stuff in Los Angeles, who knows? There's also a chance that Kathy is in a minimized role instead of a main one. So I don't want to go as far as to say that Kathy won't be in the season at all, but it is looking like she is no longer a part of the main ensemble, and it does appear that the role that Frances Conroy is playing could have been originally intended for Kathy Bates. Once again, this is still not confirmed, but with that video shared by Ryan Kira Armstrong, the rumor now has a decent amount of credibility. The fact that Ryan Murphy has yet to confirm or deny this makes me think there may be a bit more to this than meets the eye, so let's hold off, but do not get your hopes up to see Kathy Bates this season. Speaking of Frances Conroy, though, it seems as though we have got a first look at her character in the season. In a promo for FX on Hulu, eagle-eyed fans spotted a stray shot of Frances Conroy in an unknown project. Unless Frances has filmed a secret other project for FX, I think it's safe to say we are looking at Frances' character in double feature. I love this look for the character, it's very different from all of her others. I'm loving the silver hair and the martini, uh, I'm excited. Another still was released on Instagram of one of the scenes the crew had filmed in Provincetown featuring these tall, bald, Nosferatu-looking creatures. And in a video that a fan recorded of these creatures, it seems that Spencer Novich will be playing one of them. Let me know all of your theories on what these creatures are. I've seen some people say vampires, but remember Angelica Ross did say that there are no vampires in this season, but that could have been a misdirect. There's been rumors that Spencer Novich is playing the Provincetown urban legend called the Black Flash, so maybe this has something to do with the lore and history of Provincetown. Alright, so we've finally entered the on season in my eyes, and it's been 500 days since the final episode of 1984 aired. And I know I'm speaking for all of you when I say I am so grateful to be getting more AHS content, and it's only going to keep on coming. I expect teasers, posters, and maybe even a trailer in the near future. So stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed to make sure you're in the know. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.